My name is Graeme Todd, I'm the director here at Zotec. We've been dealing with Vertical Meadow now for 18 months, developing a system around Alistair's product. My name's Alistair Law. I started um, Vertical Meadow, well, I started testing Vertical Meadow in about 2013. Since then, we're seeing enormous momentum on greening in cities, so that's where kind of Vertical Meadow really came alive through some pioneering clients of ours. So Meadow Cladding is a rain screen cladding system which has taken the seeds that you find in a calcareous meadow and we place them vertically. I wanted to bring greening in a place where everyone can have it and to reduce the costs and the engineer in me wanted to turn it from being a landscape product into a cladding product. And where we've arrived now in actually delivering a product which is based on an existing rain screen cladding system. That sounds, oh, that, how easy is that? But actually it's very simple. The, the, the mineral wall has the seeds on and we literally, like kids, when you grow crests on cotton wool, it's no different. You start adding water and then the seeds start to sprout. And within seven to 10 days, you start already seeing those little shoots coming through and very quickly it grows out. And, and then it follows the natural seasons that you have of a meadow. We saw a good opportunity to put in players. A built up rain screen system, so you have all the benefits of a rain screen cladding system, drain the back ventilated, the attachment methodology, but it integrates into it uh, vertical greenery. So the USP of our system really is that, firstly, we grow from seed in place. That's the concept that Vertical Meadow brought. So there's no messiness, soil, water being brought, brought onto construction sites. We're bringing in a dry product that can be assembled in a factory and be fully integrated for being installed by the, the contractor. And I think that's a big... It, it's a big focus. It's yeah, a big so, focus. So from an from a integration point of view, if the clientele and the client base are used to installing our hook-on systems like our FC Plus system, there's no difference in this installation methodology for this system because it's fully integrated fabricated and built in-house, integrated in the product, so delivery to site is the same. exactly the same as you would receive a rain screen system. From that perspective, I think we have enormous advantage over other systems where they're relying on a very built-up approach of multiple different materials, perhaps other contractors getting involved in, in doing it, whereas we're saying actually this can be delivered by the same contractor using the same components. We're taking out a lot of risk. For the client. The system also being a rain screen and built for rain screen has, a, has a, a design life equivalent to the rest of the rain screen so you might have to reseed during that life but the actual core value and core components what you've spent your money on is going to last 25 years. Yeah it'd be th th 30 plus years. 30 plus years. There's also the opposite side of things in relation to performance so Fire is a, is, is a major Fire's topic key. still, uh, it's really, really key. A lot of the other products that are in the market are, uh, are all very plastic based products. Uh, not great for the environment to start with, but also they don't perform very well in relation to heat and combustion. We have a built up system which is of uh, limited combustibility. A1 products essentially, we use in mineral wall products. We integrate them into our system, which is built up of a number of components. All those components will work back to a fire rating, which is of, of limited combustibility. What's driving the adoption of, of green walls on buildings? It really is, um, there's obviously a, for some projects it might be a personal thing, but there's clear planning regulation to, to make it happen. In London, there's urban greening factors where you have to have a certain amount of greenery based on your plot on your building. And because the sites are so constrained, it, Vertical greening is all of them is becoming one of the only options um, you, can, you can take. Then obviously with biodiversity net gain, um, that has just come into law, that will require both big and small sites to bring biodiversity in. Again, living walls can provide an answer to that. So if you're looking at a tall building where there's no, there's, there's no perimeter space, all that gets moved to the roof quite often. So if you've got sedum roofs and you've got green areas up, up on the roof that are not accessible, people are not going outside. So if we can move the horizontal roof greenery to a vertical space and create an outdoor space on the roof for people to eat lunch and, and, and socialize, we're utilizing space that would never normally be utilized. You've actually got 
something that's really quite attractive and has a function, yeah. which is which is important. And that's what we want to want to achieve. We want to achieve form and function. Yeah. You know, which is which is really good. It, there's a reason to put these facades on a wall, yeah. not because you have to, because you want to. Yeah. And actually, in certain environments, we need to. Yeah. And I think buildings. If you can start them becoming personal, it becomes a much more exciting kind of place to go and work. So for staff, but but also, for example, data centres. These are now happening in urban areas. So uh, there is people walking by. There is a, a kind of a, a responsibility for for all of us to, to to think about people, but also this this back to this kind of relationship or co-relationship we sh we should have with nature, which we've kind of excluded for such a long time. I think people are seeing the nature side, but now we've got to turn it into the building world, and the building world needs to to notice what we're doing and, and say, ah, oh, that's a really easy thing to implement on our projects. That maintenance question always comes up on Living Walls and um, we follow very simple meadow approaching of, of if, if we had vertical lawn mowers, we'd use vertical lawn mowers. So typically we'd cut probably once or twice a year the, the whole of the area and it, and it literally is a, a shave. We've been using um, hedge trimmers. Um, so I think whatever living wall system um, you have, you just need to think how you're gonna do, but there's no individual plants. We're not gonna, no one's gonna have to take plant pots up and, and put new plants in. Nature kind of does its thing, it will grow back and for us it's a, a seasonal approach and so you do get that seasonality. So we, that, that maintenance follows that seasonality. One thing we're finding now at the moment though is with, with such enormous variations in climate, um, so one day we might have 27 degrees and the next day we might be back down to 14 or whatever as shown this week. Um, that, that really is, that's where our systems, which are effectively adapting to, our irrigation systems adapt to weather. And they, they change their irrigation cycles, they adapt to kind of monthly cycles. Uh, so the maintenance really is minimal on the wall. It's just checking and we do that remotely. The use of data and machine learning extends not just to our irrigation system, where we are getting sort of real-time monitoring of, of power, water flow, uh, temperatures, whether there's water in the tank. Um, there's a lot, we have quite a lot of sensors around the system, but there's also another side of it, which is actually we're starting to trial a system called Angry Sound, which is hearing, we, we place it on the wall and it's listening to what um, bees and pollinators are flying around the wall and it will then um, list them out. And we're, also, we're gonna start getting reports back from which type of bees have been on our wall and what type of hoverflies and that just of listening to the insects um, and, and therefore um, segmenting them is quite, we see as a, an essential for all projects. This is a facade product. I think that's, 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 the, that's a real difference. And we've, we've got demonstrators which will be going up in the next few weeks. And, and they are, for us, an opportunity for people to go and actually feel, touch, see our systems. I guess what's exciting is we're the only people in the world who have developed a cladding system like this. There's nothing like this else in the world. And we've developed some very strong patents around it because We've invested heavily time and money to kind of get it to here. So that, that kind of pattern technology is constantly evolving as well. It's been really exciting to just develop the panel system with Sotec and the facade engineer in me likes the engineering and that everything's integrated in Sotec. So we're not getting external parties to develop certain parts of it. It's all done in house, which adds enormous value. So as a, as a collaborative company between was uh, Sotec and, and Vertical Meadow, we are really excited about this product. It's something very different to what we would normally do. Um, there's been a lot of development put into this product. We, uh, we are specialists in the product, as are Meadow, so if you, if you would like to get in touch or you need to know any more in relation to the product, get in touch, press the link below, or contact Sotec's technical team or Meadow's technical team and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you.